So, uh, my dear students, let's continue uh, the and energy pharmacology. Let's go directly go to part two of the adrenergic pharmacology. We have seen that uh, the receptors and the neurotransmitters synthesis everything is uh, finished in the previous part. That's a part one. Now in part two, we'll be discussing about uh, the endogenous catecholamines. At the end of this part two, you'll be understanding uh, the endogenous catecholamines, uh, dopamine, adrenaline, noradrenaline, its major actions, especially on the heart and other system. Then we'll be discussing the different type of classification of uh, adrenergic drugs. So generally those drugs which mimic the uh, actions of catecholamines or the neurotransmitters, these endogenous catecholamines are generally referred as sympathomimetics. I repeat, it's called sympathomimetics which mimic the actions of catecholamines at the receptors. Which receptors? We have seen, we have discussed uh, the alpha and beta receptors, the subtypes of alpha and beta receptors. So any drugs which act on this receptor, whether it can be partly synthetic or completely synthetic, but mimic the actions of these endogenous catecholamines are referred as this biphasic effect. And you don't find this biphasic effect instead only uh, rise in BP because the BP is mainly due to beta to act not seen with the no. Moving on to the next drug is dopamine and uh, you know that as I told you dopamine is the principal neurotransmitter in the brain the CNS there it mainly act on dopamine receptors and one more thing like when you give uh, peri uh, ex uh, uh, like when you give peripherally it won't cross blood brain barrier and you remember that uh, uh, usually for the treatment of Parkinsonism uh, you don't give dopamine acids though it is uh, deficient but you give the precursor of dopamine is called levodopa and you have seen, uh, you have learned that levodopa is the product of dopamine fine so um, periphery in periphery was the role of dopamine and i told you at the beginning of this part 2 dopamine at the lower level physiological level it only act on the dopamine receptors but higher level it act on both uh, 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 beta receptors and still higher doses on alpha receptors. So please remember that. Low doses, which is equivalent to less than 2 microgram per kg per minute, a continuous intravenous infusion of dopamine acts predominantly on D1 uh, dopaminergic receptors in renal, mesenteric, and coronary vascular beds. And I wanted to tell you D1 dopamine receptors are further divided into D1, D2, D3, D4, D5, and all. And D1 uh, is located in some area in the periphery which includes the renal arteries, mesenteric blood vessels and the coronary blood vessels. So there it produces a sort of dilatation. There it produces a sort of dilatation. And this is a low dose which is almost less than 2 microgram per kg per minute. And uh, dopamine 1 receptors activate adenyl cyclates. Again, uh, you know that it's a G protein couple receptors and increase the uh, vascular smooth muscle uh, capacity and at the higher rates so when you do increase the dose less than 2 uh, which is uh, only dopamine receptors now 2 to 10 microgram per kg per minute it can also act on beta 1 receptors and where do you find beta 1 receptors it is mainly predominant on the myocardium or the heart so there it increase the uh, heart rate and force of conduction especially the force of contraction. Therefore, this dose of dopamine may be preferred in heart failure to improve the contractility as inotropic agent. As inotropic agent. What is inotropism? To increase the force of contraction of the heart. And uh, when you see the higher doses, uh, greater than 10 microgram, more than 10 microgram per kg per minute, it can even act on alpha 1 receptors to cause vasoconstriction. And this, is, this dose is not used in uh, any any context because it can have devastating effect uh, which can produce various unwanted unnecessary effects. So what are the uses of dopamine uh, apart from those uh, Parkinsonism and all like uh, uh, we, uh, we use dopamine in certain shock especially uh, a shock caused by low cardiac output, cardiogenic shock 
and accompanied by co compromised renal function leading to oliuria. So this will increase the contractility as well as uh, increase the renal blood flow so that uh, it can try to overcome oliguria. Okay. So that's one Im important use and uh, it's also used dopamine maybe uh, the dose uh, which is mainly affect uh, 2 to 10 microgram per kg per minute can also be used in heart fail, uh, congestive cardiac failure. So please remember that. Efficacy in protecting the kidneys is not being clearly demonstrated though it produces a renal vasodilatation. So that's about the three important, uh, I mean role of actions of three important catecholamine uh, includes uh, adrenaline which can act on all the subtypes of adrenergic receptors alpha, alpha 1, alpha 2, beta 1, beta 2, beta 3. And when you come to uh, a noradrenaline, it's only act on alpha 1, beta 1 and no beta 2 action. And there will be some difference in their action, especially the biphasic effect on the blood pressure, which is not seen with the noradrenaline. All right. I hope you are following me. You are with me. Right. Now, when you talk about dopamine, uh, physiological dose of dopamine is mainly act on the dopaminergic receptors. And higher doses, it can act on beta 1 receptors. Still higher doses, it can also act on the or uh, uh, other receptors like uh, alpha receptor. Now, let's talk on classification of sympathomimetics. Classification of sympathomimetics. So, uh, here you can talk uh, in two ways. One is direct acting, indirect acting. And the, there is one more, it is mixed acting, which means this mixed acting can have both direct and indirect role. So, let's see, like uh, instead of beating about the bush. Let's see what is these things. Direct acting sympathomimetics act directly on one of the more or one or more of the adrenergic receptors. It means simply go one of the adrenergic receptors, all the adrenergic receptors or some of the, see some drugs only act on beta 1 receptors. Some drugs which can act on all beta receptors. Some drugs can act on all uh, adrenergic receptors and some drugs may act only on alpha receptors. So all these drugs are called directly acting sympathomimetics and I hope you remember what you mean by sympathomimetics. Any drugs which mimic the actions of the uh, FO mentioned uh, catecholamines. Alright. These agents may exhibit considerable selectivity for a specific receptor subtype that will be discussed later. So for example, phenylephrine, selective alpha 1, salbutamol, selective beta 2 and many more other. Uh, clonidine is CLO, NID, and clonidine is selective alpha 2. Uh, so on. All right. I have some more. Any the classification will come. Let them. Uh, we discuss. Classification. Okay. Indirectly acting. Some of the drugs promote the displacing and storage. Some of the drugs uh, inhibit the reuptake, like cocaine. Some of the drugs will inhibit uh, the metabolizing enzymes like monoamino oxidase and COMP. And all these drugs uh, belongs to the indirectly. Acting. Now the direct acting drugs. Uh, this is how you classify selective, non selective. Selective, we have alpha 1, phenylephrine, alpha 2, clonidine, beta 1, selective, dobutamine, beta 2, selective, salbutamol. Non selective, both alpha 1, alpha 2, oxymetazoline, any, many more are there. We will discuss that when we discuss about individual drug. Beta 1, beta 2, isoprotanol, and isoprenaline is there. Uh, all the drugs, all the receptors, uh, epinephrine, except beta 2, it is norepinephrine. So this is, these are the uh, direct acting drugs, non-selective. Now indirect acting, we have releasing agents, amphetamine, tyramine, amphetamine, tyramine, which promote the release of neurotransmitter which like uh, norepinephrine or adrenaline or dopamine from the vesicles. Uh, uptake inhibitors, of course, cocaine is a classic example. Monoamine inhibitors, selgerine and COMT inhibitors and a couple. They both are using Parkinsonism because both will increase the level of dopamine in the brain. Substantia nigra, past combacta and all that. Now, uh, the third one, what we are discussing about mixed acting. Because these drugs can ha have any of these mechanisms and some of the direct effects. These two together, mixed acting. Ephedrine, it's an alkaloid from Ephedra vulgaris, having alpha 1, alpha 2, beta 1, beta 2. It's almost like adrenaline. But in addition to that, which can promote releasing of uh, norepinephrine from the vesicles. And I hope you remember that diagram. So that's all about the classification of the drugs. So 
with this class uh, i tried to convey a message of uh, how does uh, each uh, endogenous catecholamines act on various uh, receptors various locations which includes the heart blood vessels bronchi and many more uh, locations are there you can easily uh, interpret them based on the receptors that uh, locations of receptors in its and its transducer mechanism have been discussed second uh, part was like uh, classification of the drugs you can classify the direct acting indirect acting mixed acting those examples are there uh, then direct acting all those uh, selective alpha 1 selective alpha 2 the selective beta 1 selective beta 2 all beta uh, all alpha all all receptors then indirectly acting you have uh, enzyme inhibitors comt and mao inhibitors reuptake inhibitors like cocaine you have leasing inhibitors like amphetamine etc all right so the, these are the things we discussed uh, with this class uh, we have finished the second part and uh, thank you and again we'll continue rest of the things uh, in coming classes so thank you for your patience and as usual please uh, give your uh, roll call your attendance by uh, commenting your name and uh, your register number thank you